What's up y'all, here to talk about the state of Halo Infinite recording on my phone, even though I do have a nice mic, but this is just something quick, so I don't really feel like setting up a mic and all that type of stuff, whatever. So my perspective is from someone that's played Halo on and off for years, um, because obviously the series hasn't always been able to keep everybody's attention at times. I never switched over to Call of Duty or Fortnite or anything like that. And I didn't always play Halo in a hardcore setting, but when Reach was out, when Reach was in his prime, I was playing that every day. Um, even for Halo 5, I grinded to 152, and once you know they announced that Infinite would be delayed, I was like, okay, let me give Halo 5 a shot, because I never really feel like I gave it a fair shot. So that's just my perspective as someone that's been playing Halo for a long time, and I'm trying to address the idea that Infinite needs to be saved. So anytime there's a type of positive news, you get all the big Halo YouTubers saying, oh, Infinite has been saved, Infinite is fixed, off any little pieces of information. But for me, I understand, but at the same time, it doesn't make sense to put that much pressure on simple fixes like that to fix the game. Like I get it, 343 wasn't giving out any information for a long time, um, but that being said, just because we do get a little bit of information doesn't mean all of a sudden you have to overreact to it. And that's mostly just talking about the kind of the big YouTube accounts and whatnot, because I haven't really seen the regular fans even say anything like that. So season two is coming out tomorrow. Hype train has been on and off. First, they showed a few pieces of armor. People got excited and they showed the roadmap. People didn't, they, their excitement was gone. They started to be disappointed. Then they had the live stream and people started to go back and forth. But one sentiment I did see, again, mostly from big YouTubers, like, oh, Joe Staden, he's about to save Infinite. He's about to save everything. So I just think it's like, I, I understand it's smart to have someone involved in the series that he has been. Um, but putting one person as the savior of the game, like, I don't think that's the best way to go. Like, you just end up gassing yourself up and gassing the game up, and then you get disappointed when things don't work out. So I don't know if y'all remember back when the big team battle patch was needed, was heavily needed, but once it was announced that it was a thing, all these YouTube videos came out saying, oh, Infinite is saved, we're finally getting a big team battle patch, and the patch didn't even work the first day. That's kind of the stuff I'm talking about. Like, why are you getting putting so much hype and so much like value into a patch that's saving the game? Now, that's just a patch. That's something that should happen regardless. It's not saving the game. That's making the game playable, and it didn't even work. So you ended up just making yourself look foolish, getting all overexcited for it. Um, to me, it's always been pretty clear this game was going to be a work in progress. Um, you know, it would probably take maybe two more of these seasons. Considering these seasons have been six months so far, like I'm not even sure if season three and four are going to be three months. So, you know, after maybe two more seasons, I can kind of understand if the game isn't that where we think it is and start kind of proclaiming it as dead and whatnot and really getting upset. When the game first dropped, it was clear that was kind of like the alpha stage, you know, when the, even the, the playlist situation didn't work. And then when they finally changed the playlist and added a few things here and there, to me, that was basically a beta. So people are expecting season two to come in and change everything, but really I'm treating season two like it's about to be how I expected maybe season one to be, you know, unfinished and like expecting things to be added later. Like, I mean, most Halo games are like that anyway, especially live service games. So when you get a live service Halo game, of course it's gonna start off slow. That's just how I've always saw it. So, like I said, I'm not saying in any way that getting excited or even being disappointed is bad. You know, it's Halo, it's always gonna be a fun game for plenty of people, myself included. Also, there's plenty of stuff to complain about, especially when 343 has not handled this the best. You know, they they really struggle to kind of connect with the community on this one after over-promising and under-delivering. But for me, like, there are certain things that just aren't worth complaining about anymore. Like, they know the weekly rewards are garbage, they've talked about it, they've mentioned it, but people keep complaining about it. But it's very clear that these were all planned out far in advance and they're not all of a sudden just gonna start making weekly rewards that make sense that are worth our time when they've been struggling to do that from the get-go like they're not all of a sudden gonna have this content ready to go that's how I've always understood it so they've talked about it they said they were gonna change it for season two if they don't change it for season two then I understand being upset about it but 
for me, I never saw that as something being like there was no point in putting that much energy into being mad about something that we knew was always going to be jacked up. So I think the focus should be on giving feedback and making complaints about things that haven't been acknowledged about 343. And that's coming from the perspective of some stupid YouTube account with no subscribers in one video. But I was originally going to make this video about the Halo 5 152 bonus coding because I always thought it was a huge spit in the face to the fans that spent the time getting the 152 to not be given what was promised. And I saw almost none of the big YouTubers making any commentary on that. So I felt like it was worth complaining about because not only was it ignored by 343, but the YouTubers that are supposed to be like an extension of the community, supposed to have our back, they didn't mention it as well. I think I saw really one YouTube video in all my time looking up videos for Halo and basically since the game launched. Um, so, and even that, 343, they gave an update. They came out and said, oh, we're, we're about to fix the 152 code. So I was like, all right, so now I don't have to complain about it no more. Now I don't have to figure out how to make a YouTube video. Um, anyways, so if they mess it up and it's still garbage, when whatever fix they claim goes out, then I'll probably bring it up again. But outside of this explanation, I don't really feel I need to talk about it. They said they're gonna fix it, and I know it's gonna take some time, just like straight up everything in the game that they've mentioned so far. So I guess we'll see. So really in summary, I just think it's not productive to keep trying to vocalize the same issues over and over again that some people honestly may need to take a break from the game. Just play some other games. That's how I see it. 343's track record obviously is question one best, but I think they deserve a little credit for making fun games, even though the games may need to take some time to become fun. Like Halo 5 towards the end of his lifespan was great. Um, MCC, obviously we know how big of a blunder that was when it first came out, and, but look at it now. People love it now. I personally didn't even really rock with Halo 5 when it first came out, but then when I ended up having to grind from like level 30 to 152 once they announced the infinite delay, I had a lot of fun with the game. Um, even though the grind was terrible and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone, but I think infinite is going to be seen as a different game in the year, let's be real. Especially now that 343 realized they didn't like initially capture the casual fan base like they planned to do and they ended up having to come back to the hardcore fans. To me, that's where you get stuff like where they try and fix 152. They, that probably wasn't even something they cared about when they thought this game was going to appeal to the casuals. So a lot of people have been talking about live service games that got the plug pulled and stuff like that. But I feel like Halo has put too many resources in for Microsoft to do that. So Infinite has had too many resources, not Halo, sorry. Well, Halo has, but you know what I'm saying. So I think they're in this game for maybe at least five years. You never know. Um, maybe it'll be four. There has been some talk that they're working on the next Halo game, but obviously we wouldn't see that until like 2025, 2026. So who knows? So yeah, really my main point is to just be patient. And if the game is still trash and we're in season three or four, then of course it's time for them to pack it up. But I think we're gonna be okay, y'all.